Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is a very short overview video for Module 3. In Module 3, we'll be talking about gene functions and phenotypes, particularly what proteins do and what goes wrong when they can't do it. And this thinking is going to carry us from Module 2, where we thought about the DNA differences, how DNA differences arise, and the kinds of DNA differences that can exist, to Module 4, where we want to be able to think about complex factors to do with the effect of genetic differences on phenotypes, things like how genes interact to determine phenotypes, and in particular issues such as cancer. So in Module 3, we're going to start with a couple of lectures just on the basics of what proteins are. And then quite a large block of lectures on what proteins do. They catalyze reactions, they um, provide the physical structure of our bodies, they move molecules across membranes and throughout our body, they regulate transcription, they regulate other proteins and are themselves regulated. And a brief lecture about regulation by RNAs, and then the most important block of lectures in this module, which is lectures about the relationship between genotype and phenotype. And finally, a housekeeping lecture on how genes are discovered and how we name them. Now, if you've got a strong background in biology already, if you've taken basic cell biology or a strong first-year university biology course, you could probably get away with skipping the first half of this module, videos A through H. And you can always come back later and watch them because these are videos, they're always available. Don't skip lectures J through N, especially lectures M and N. They're presenting dominance, something you may well have learned about in the past, presenting it in a new way that's fundamentally important for understanding the rest of the course. Now I want to introduce a part of the course that you haven't encountered in Modules 1 and 2, and that's our Peer Explain Assignments. We developed these assignments because we wanted to build students' ability to explain what they were learning to other people who didn't know as much genetics. And so each assignment starts with a question about a genetics issue, the kind of question that might come up in a casual conversation. Um, this example question would likely come up in the pub over a couple of beers. Students then write a short answer to this question um, intended for a non-expert audience, and then other students evaluate their answers. Here's how it plays out for assignment A. You'll find a link to the assignment in the sidebar. And when you click on it, you'll see that we've released the submission phase of the assignment so that you can work on it now. Your submission is due by the end of Module 3, the same time that the graded quiz for Module 3 is due. Once that deadline is passed, everybody's submissions then are put into a pool and shuffled and given to other students. First, you'll get a um, set of training submissions designed to make sure that everybody has sufficient sort of expertise at the evaluation. And then you'll get three submissions from your peers for you to evaluate. You're welcome to do more than three if you'd like. And finally, you'll be asked to reevaluate your own submission in the light of what you've learned. All of this evaluation work is to be done by the end of Module 4, and we'll give you a reminder with Module 4. Now, we don't want this to be a lot of work, and so we've designed the total time commitment to hopefully only be about two hours. One more point, though. If you don't submit any explanation by the end of Module 3, you can't participate in the evaluation component of the assignment, and your grade will be zero. Now, coming up next is Lecture 3A, where we're going to cover the very basic principles of what proteins are. I hope to see you there. 